welcome back. Today you're going to be watching um, a vlog that's basically a bunch of stuff that happened this May. First, I wanted to open up these packages. A viewer sent me these boxes and so she said that she had some guinea pig and chinchilla products that she wanted me to try out that her and her daughter make. So I'm really excited to open this up and uh, see what everything looks like. So we're going to do that really quick. Won't be too long and then you'll get to see all of the stuff we did with the animals this month. And my P.O. box will be up on the screen if you guys want to send me anything. I always unbox everything that I get on camera. I have some letters that I haven't opened up yet, but I'll be doing a mail video soon. So this is Winnie Guinea Pooh, handmade toys for small pets. So it's just, it's very simple. It's cardboard and um, the little, you know, straw uh, stuff. But yeah, it's so cute. The animals are going to love this. And then I just, you, you can't help it. You like to buy your pets cute things, even if they're not going to be able to appreciate that part of it. Oh my gosh, look at that. <laughs> it's so cute. I hate that they're gonna like destroy this, but it's so pretty. Isn't that so cute? I'm actually gonna do another room tour soon. So I'll be including all of this. You'll get to see it in the cages and see how it looks. And I should probably do a chinchilla cage tour. I haven't done that. daughter are very creative. They're doing a great job with these toys. And this is better than what I make for my animals. Okay, here's another one. Same one. It's really cute. Oh, and here's one that's a different color. That's great. So I probably won't put all these in at the same time. I'll probably let them uh, have, you know, one at a time. And here's one more box from them. Oh, that's another really nice one. The chinchillas are gonna love this. This is really cool because there's a lot of different textures and just different things for them to interact with. This is great environmental enrichment. Thank you so much to Sherry and her daughter from uh, Winnie Guinea Pooh. <laughs> These toys are so cute. Absolutely love them. I'm gonna put all their information for their Etsy store on uh, the description of this video. Definitely go check them out. Their toys are really cute and I think my animals are gonna love them, but I'll definitely put up another video soon to let you guys know if they did enjoy the toys. When the weather gets warm, it's time to shear the alpacas. Shearing is a lot of work and can be dangerous for both the animals and the humans. So we do everything possible to make it safe and a positive experience so that no one gets hurt. The alpacas enjoy the feeling of all the extra hair coming off and this is also a great time to trim their toenails. Shearing blades are very sharp and powerful. If not used correctly, they can cut off a finger or hurt the alpacas by cutting into their flesh. In order to prevent this, we tie the animal down and stretch them out so that the blade can pass over their skin very smoothly. The entire blanket comes off their back in one piece. This is the most valuable part of their fur and it will be sent off to be processed. This can be used to make yarn, clothing, and blankets. We also shear their legs and neck. This part is not as valuable, but it will still be sent off to be processed. And this can be used to make things like rugs, felt, toys, pillows, and other things. Less quality fur can be used to make other things like dryer balls. I like to keep my alpacas looking cute, so I leave their faces very fluffy, and sometimes even I leave hair on their legs. Most alpacas are used to being sheared and can handle the process just fine. And a few complain. Camilo did not take his first shearing very well, uh, but he did look very cute afterwards.
Rose did much better, but she's always been a lot tougher than Camilo. You can see the difference in quote thickness and quality between the different alpacas. Plata is an alpaca that doesn't produce as much as the others and now in her old age she has very little. Hers will probably not be enough to make yarn with. We also take extra care to be gentle with her and her old joints. Having a baby also takes a toll on them, of course. Hattie's coat is much smaller than normal. I really care about the well-being of each alpaca, and that's why I give them a two-year break between breedings. Most people breed alpacas about six weeks after they give birth. I wait two years. Amelia has a lot of joint problems and is unable to use her back legs completely. She's not in pain and is able to live a normal life, but we still make special accommodations for her. This means she cannot be tied down during the shearing. Uh, this does make the process more difficult and dangerous. But the good thing is, is that she's very accepting of our help and works with us to get the job done. By shearing her this way, the blanket may not come out as good and we could lose value on it, but our priority is for her to be comfortable and pain free.
During the process, Amelia decided to sit down. Alpacas are very easy to handle in that way, and they will often sit down when humans are working on them. They'll sit down during travel, and sometimes if they don't want to be moved, they'll sit down. <laughs> Here, I think she sat down because she was getting tired and was still very compliant. This made it easier for us to get finished. Poor Willow, I don't know when the last time it was that she got sheared or if she's actually ever been sheared. I bought her last summer after shearing, so I'm sure she was very glad to get rid of all of that hair. Willow is a llama, but if you want to see what an alpaca looks like after going years without being sheared, uh, go over to my Instagram. I uploaded a photo of an alpaca that can barely walk because of all of its hair. I know sometimes people see shearing videos and they think it's animal abuse. Putting this much time, effort, and money into caring for these animals in just one day is not animal abuse. It's animal abuse to not do it. I think people don't understand how much money it actually costs to even get this done, and the fact that these animals do not shed, so unless we help them, they will suffer. We aren't being mean by sharing the alpacas and llamas. We could save several hundreds of dollars and just leave them like that, like many people do, in fact. It's always important to use facts and not emotions when it comes to deciding what's best for animals. I'm very often confronted by people who know nothing about animals and want to just use their emotions to tell me that I'm wrong. Look, Amelia rolled. <laughs> Camila's so cute. Look at that. And then I got a new sugar glider cage. You guys got to see it earlier this week, uh, so here's how I'm building it. This cage is what I wanted, but watch my sugar glider video. It's not a very good cage. Jaime builds all the cages we buy, and he said that this was one of the worst that he's had to put together. You'll notice that he had to use a drill. Typically with these cages, you shouldn't have to use any power tools, but uh, just check out that video. It, it wasn't that good of a cage. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm done putting together <laughs> my fairy. Okay, so I'm done putting together my new sugar glider cage. I'm just missing a couple of beds that are going to go at the top there. Uh, the sugar gliders are currently in them though, so I'm going to put those in right now. Um, but yeah, there's a bunch of their stuff that I'll go into more detail probably tomorrow morning. But there's some of their toys and everything. And then I have their food laid out for them. Um, I think I gave them more food than what they need, but I don't want them to spend their first day together fighting. The sugar gliders did really well together for their first time being in the same cage. In the future, I will make a video about how to bond sugar gliders to each other. Thanks so much for watching this vlog, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!